All right, so just a quick note, when you are choosing a computer to be your home server, if you've got one laying around that you're not using, that's great, but make sure it's got enough RAM in it because sometimes if you've if you've got an older computer that's like a 32 bit and you've only got two or four gigs of ram it's not going to be good for home servers uh eight gigs of ram depending on depending on what you're running on the server this very well could be just fine the computer that i'm using i built it up and it's got 16 gigs of ram it's got a quad core intel i7 processor and i have a uh, couple of 500 gig hard drives and a terabyte hard drive so make sure you have the hard drive space i highly recommend at least two drives in there that are not the same as your uh, operating system hard drive i'm going what i would suggest is 16 gigs of ram or more especially if you're going to be using this computer for a computer as well as server so basically if you if you're going to work on it you got to make sure that's powerful enough to also keep the server sides of uh, things running correctly. So what I would recommend, minimum 16 gigs of RAM, make sure that you've got a quad core or better processor. Uh, a dual core should work fine, theoretically. Make sure that it's got a proper cooling because it's going to be on 24 seven, so it's going to get hot. So you want to make sure that it can be cooled efficiently to prevent overheating. So that's just a few tips go with whatever you need if you want to go buy one buy a computer specifically for this go for it uh, but the purpose of this is to use what you have at home so that way you don't have to spend any extra money but sometimes with computer projects it doesn't hurt to spend a little extra money so let's go ahead and get started first i'd like to start off by renaming the computer so go to your start menu i hit the windows key because i like shortcuts and then start typing in system. You'll see system with control panel, go to that one. And then go into change settings. And then you'll hit change again. And you'll rename it. I named it something simple, Justin's desktop, because that's what it is. Make it easy to remember, not nothing too long. When you rename your computer, you need to reboot it. So go ahead and reboot. Next, you'll want to set up the extra hard drives that you've installed. So first, you'll want to go down to the Start menu and do Disk Management. Windows 10 has renamed it to Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions in the Control Panel. Disk Management is the same thing. You'll see up here in the top left tells you Disk Management. All right, so. When you open this, you're going to see all sorts of partitions and everything. I'll maximize this for you. You're gonna see all sorts of partitions up here at the top. You've got your C drive, and which is your disk zero, or at least for mine it is. And then it'll tell you your partitions. Uh, and then it'll tell you about all your other stuff. So I've already got mine ready to go. So it's hard to show you without wiping one of these, the exact. Uh, steps but here I'll, I'll show you the best of my ability so first off if you haven't already you'll want to right click and initialize your disk I've already initialized it so I've skipped that step but when you go to initialize you'll select the disk that you're working with it's an it'll be in a pop-up here and then you'll click on GPT partition and then we, what you'll want to do is click OK and come out here. From here, you will right click on the drive and go to New Simple Volume. Again, I've already done that, so my apologies, I can't show you firsthand. But once you go to New Simple Volume, you'll specify the size. Typically, you'll leave it as it is because uh, it, it already standard. It's standard to do the maximum, but make sure that your maximum or whatever size you want the disk is selected. You'll then specify the drive letter and the name. For this first disk, disk one, I chose D for data. That's because for my Windows computers, I am using D for data. If you look at my disk three here, this is M for Mac. So I changed that drive letter to M. And then disk four is V for Veeam backup because that's my backup hard drive. So go ahead and specify the drive letter and the name. 
if you forget to name it or you don't specify the right drive letter or you want to change it for whatever reason, you can always right click, change drive letter and paths, and then you can add, change, and remove to make whatever changes necessary. Once you choose that, you'll want to specify file system. Uh, usually that's NTSF, and then you'll click finish. And once you do that, you've got normal drives like what I have here. Just a quick side note, I suggest choosing GPT partitions over MBR because it can handle larger partition sizes, basically larger than two terabyte, whereas MBRs can't. Uh, it's basically an older technology used for older computers and not really used these days. But when installing Windows 10 on a computer, Windows is smart enough to go ahead and auto configure this for that specific hard drive. But when you are installing secondary ones like what we did here, you'll need to choose GPT, not MBR. So once you're done with this here, all you have to do is exit out and we are going to start sharing these drives. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into control panel to start sharing. We're going to network and internet and then we'll click on network and sharing center. From there we'll go to the left and change advanced sharing settings. Now you'll want to change your privacy and guest or public so that way you can have your uh, network discovery. But the best thing is, is to go down here to all networks, turn on sharing so that way anybody with read and write access on this network can access your public folders. You don't necessarily have to turn that one on, but I did. I also turned on use 182-bit encryption to help protect file sharing connections. And then also made sure that turn on password protected sharing. That is the key one right there. You want to make sure that one is selected. So then you'll save your changes and get out of control panel. And now you'll want to share your drives because right now you'll be able to see your computer on the network from another computer, but your drives aren't shared yet. So you'll go into File Explorer, click on this PC, and you'll see your drives. And then from there, you'll want to right click, go to Properties, go to Sharing. Then you'll want to hit Advanced Sharing. Go into Permissions. Now you'll want to select who has uh, full control and read and write. Everyone can have change and read. You can allow or deny whatever you need to there. But your administrators, you want to make sure that you are an administrator and give yourself full control because you'll want to use your credentials for accessing all of these drives. Now, depending on what drives you want, who and how to, they can access with their read write permissions, that'll change and you'll have to make sure that they have proper accounts set up on this computer for that. But for right now, we're just talking about admins and I hope that you are an admin yourself. Otherwise, this might be a little hard to do. So next, once you get the sharing done, you'll want to go into security. You can change everything here for what these users can and can't do. Since I'm the only one using this, I've got everything on allow and then administrators on full control. So just make sure that your settings for sharing and security are set up for each specific user that you are setting up for this. Then you can close it. And then what I would suggest is rebooting your computer. And when your computer comes back on, you'll be good to go.